So the aim today is very much about empowering communities to take effective action. Spiritual connection is quite strong. Temperature's going up, there's no denying it. You can measure it on the thermometers, and we do that all around the world. So the key message really I'm presenting is from healthy landscapes comes healthy food and fibre and healthy profits, people and planet. Most of the uh, Western world anyway is now looking pretty seriously at regenerative ag. But it's only one part of the puzzle. It has to make sense to people. Well, we're in a small property, uh, starting to make changes, re-green the place after many years of, I guess, over excessive agriculture. I'd uh, like to pass something on to our children and grandchildren, um, and just make a difference, basically. That if industrial agriculture is a major causal factor in some of these issues. Uh, we, in regenerative farming, and its potential in the future, offers a lot of the solutions. But I thought it was really interesting, Hugh's take on how we can move past sustainability and do the whole regeneration, and just really helping the environment, helping our food supply as well. Because from our perspective as young people, we don't really see the older generations getting in and having a go. But now that we've come to this and we've seen that um, the older generation of all the agriculture techniques and stuff, they really changed. So it's good that we're all working together to have a better future and stuff like that. Yeah. There's an incredible amount of change that could happen in an unknown period of time. It could be in the next 20 years, it could be in 100 years. And so how we even begin to plan for that is a, a very big task. We need viable communities of people working together to get things done. We need viable communities of plants to actually support the plant microbiome. Climate change is a process. We can't program this into our sat nav. We're not suddenly going to arrive and it's not suddenly going to stop. We've heard it, it's going to be forever. And this is why people like me are so concerned about climate change. Because the changes that we're putting in play right now will play out over decades, to centuries, to millennia. Given what you know, and all the science and the research that you've done, whether you're out or in pessimistic or hopeful. I personally think the story I've just told is, 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 is a, a, a room for a lot of hope and excitement. It's about trust. When you are able to build trust in the community or in a relationship, then things happen. People need to feel that they're part of the solution and not just the problem. And also really that the most important emotion that we need to be fostering in our communities is hope. We had a number of our members in our groups who were really keen to get some of these guest speakers in to get a little bit more information about what is actually going on with the climate and then we wanted to hear stories from regenerative farmers who are actually taking action to manage their properties in, in an effort to ameliorate and mitigate that, that change. This is all socially, uh, the whole thing is a, a challenge but I think it's absolutely the way to go. Land care is a really good community network. So you can bring in farmers and you can bring in non-farmers. Uh, and these people may or may not even own land. And so there's a huge resource 
and inside that resource there's incredible technical experience. So there's a big community that's really diverse in their abilities and, their, and, and all willing to impart change and undertake action. And that's the real strength of Landcare. It's us that's going to make the change and, uh, and we're taking on the big powers in society, the big powers in government, uh, the big powers in the economy, the big multinationals driving industrial ag and pharmaceuticals and processing and big retail and stuff. And um, it's the power of the people stuff, so yeah, I'm preaching a bit of revolution. We don't have that extension service um, anymore. We need to look at um, more case studies because we don't seem to have the trial sites for some of the sustainable land management, so using um, each other in land care sort of makes it almost like a trial site and using that knowledge to then extend to, to other farmers through our association, through working with land care. Um, yeah, I think that's a really exciting prospect. We need to value our social capital. And social capital are people. And relationships are people. today is a celebration of all that is good about humanity, looking at a problem that yes, we have created, but it's also one that together, I believe, we can respond to and hopefully um, reduce the negative impacts. Now there's less money and so Landcare has actually had to go out and interact with farmers and farmers still want to do things and these little bits of seed funding I think are still incredibly important and we're, we're much wiser than we were 25 years ago. Uh, so you know, 25 years ago, I think we wanted to do everything, fix everything up in five minutes. It's taken 200 years to get it where it is now. So it's probably good not to rush too hard. I really do think it's now the beginning of, of more of these sorts of conversations. And I would love to see this sort of dynamic just go on a roadshow around the state. So yay, Lancair.